Okay, welcome back to episode two of the uh, RC Crew Chief Dino series. Uh, what we're going to be looking at this time is uh, motor timing, that's uh, can timing, uh, ESCs, and boost. So specifically what we're going to do is we're just going to have a look and see how much uh, performance difference does uh, changing the timing on the motor can have. Uh, blink ESC operation is their uh, difference between ESCs and uh, ESC boost timing um, surprise uh, it was a surprise to me so let's uh, move on and see what's going on this is uh, some of the curves that we're going to be looking at here so let's get started okay so we're going to use RC crew chief obviously and we're going to do some dyno analysis and this is going to be generic uh, uh, dyno files because I'm using my little home built uh, uh, Arduino based uh, uh, dyno data acquisition system so first thing I want to do is load in a file I'm just going to uh, uh, show you processing one and then I'll slip away for a minute and uh, process the rest of them so I don't bore everybody to tears. So I'm just going to load in the first one here. This process could be automated and one of these days I will do that. It is automated for all the other ones. It's just I'm too lazy to do an update I guess is what it boils down to. Okay so there's dyno calc so this uh, uh, just process the um, RPM versus time data to calculate power in red here, torque in green, and black is the efficiency. So I'm going to add this to my compare list, and uh, I'm going to go away for a second and load in some other ones, and we'll do some comparisons. Okay, I'm back. So I processed four different files here. Uh, this is all the same motor, uh, same setup, same battery, same state of charge, essentially, all the way through. Uh, so I've got 20, 40, 50, and 60 degree can timing here. So let's have a look and see what's going on. That button, this button. So um, I'm just going to turn all these on. So this shows you the power uh, output of the motor. Uh, at the four different timing settings. So you can see here the um, uh, red line is file one, which is the 20 degree. Uh, the green line is at 40 degrees. Blue line's at 50 degrees. And the uh, purple line is at 60 degrees. So you can see here that uh, uh, the low timing setting, the uh, 20 degree, we don't have quite as much power. We got a little bit of a summary here. So, uh, file one, we only had 205 watts. File two, which is at uh, 40 degrees, is at 211 watts. Then, essentially, the same at 50 degrees. And then we start dropping off uh, a little bit once we get out to the higher uh, uh, timing settings. Uh, the other thing to note here is that the current is increasing drastically um, not so much in the mid-range but at the end so we start out with 3.7 amps and by the time we get out to the 60 degree timing setting we've got 15 amps this is at the uh, basically no load rpm when the uh, motor stops accelerating so you can see we got quite a uh, current penalty between the low end and the uh, and the high end <coughs> Another thing I want to look at here is uh, sort of elaborate on that a little bit. I'm going to turn on the torque curve. And one thing that's noteworthy here is that there's a crossover point uh, between the various timing settings when you have essentially equal current or equal torque. So for this motor, that occurs around 11,000 RPM. So below 11,000 RPM. Uh, you're getting more torque out of your lower timing settings and above 11,000 RPM you're getting more torque out of your higher uh, timing settings. So this is an important point to pay attention to when you're looking at uh, setting up boost settings and we'll talk about that a little later when we get off topic here. Um, okay so the next thing I wanted to just show a little bit of here is uh, if you look at the timing 
and the amount of current draw at a essentially a constant torque value. So what I'm going to do here is try and find say about let's say about 30 degrees or sorry 30 newton millimeters of torque. So go down a little further and we'll look at the uh, so there we are 29.6 newton millimeters. So this is a 60 degree one. We've got 8.6 amps of current draw. So now let's go down to the other extreme. Let's go back to the 20 degree one and we'll look for 30 degrees there. And we'll see what the current draw is at 30 degrees or 30 newton millimeters of torque on that one. And it's going to be a little further, 26. So 31 close enough. So 10. So we got almost double the amount of current draw to get the same amount of torque. Now, in certain situations, that may be a good thing, but generally you're going to find that once you get out to the really high timing settings, the benefit you get of more RPM is severely offset by the amount of heat that you're generating uh, because of the inefficiency of the motor when it gets up to those sort of values. If you got a really, really long straightaway or something, you may have a benefit here. But you can see that there's sort of a little kink in the curve here. This is kind of what I call the knee in the in the um, um, torque or the power curve. And once you start seeing that, that usually means that the motor is going to start becoming less and less efficient. And to gain that extra RPM, the motor accelerates very slowly because the torque curve is flattening out as well. There's your torque curve in that situation. I'm going to turn off the, the top and the bottom so you can see a little better. So you can see on the 20 degree line, the torque curve is, is still fairly steep and here it starts to kind of flatten out. So to gain that extra RPM, you need a very long straightaway. Okay, so next we're going to talk about ESCs and is there a difference? I'm going to go away for a second and load some files in here to show you. Okay, so this uh, uh, little side trip we're going to take here was uh, something that I didn't really expect. Um, because I wanted to look at boost settings, I had to change out ESCs. Um, what I've used for all my testing up to this point has been a uh, uh, Novak GTB3 uh, ESC that only runs in blinky mode. So since I wanted to look at boost, I had to put in an ESC that has boost capabilities. So I swapped in a uh, Hobby Ring, Hobby Wing uh, Z Run 3.1 120 amp uh, uh, ESC so that I could look at boost settings. Uh, in the course of doing that, I decided that uh, maybe I should just have a quick look and see if there's any difference between the ESCs. And surprise, clicking the wrong button, surprise, there is. So this graph here is the uh, uh, Novak, and this one here is the Hobby Wing. So surprisingly, there's 208 watts with the Novak. And 207, or sorry, 217 watts with the uh, hobby wing. 10 watts difference. That's not insignificant, to say the least. Uh, so at 50 degrees, turn off the 30 degree. So at 50 degrees, similar thing. Uh, we've got more peak power, 217 versus 210. So 211, call it. So still a significant difference. We got more RPM, more power, more torque more everything, more current as well. We're drawing more current. You can see here uh, 6.4 amps for the uh, Novak and 9.3 for the uh, Hobby Link. So this needs some more investigation. If there's enough interest, I may uh, I've got some other ESCs here that I may uh, uh, try, but uh, if you want to see some more info on this, then uh, let me know. Okay, up next we're going to look at Boost. I'll be back. Okay, so I've loaded some more dyno runs in here. What I've got is the, uh, from the previous round with no booster timing, I've got the 20 degree and the 60 degree uh, can timing values. So what I was expecting when I uh, started looking at boost was 
I would get a purely a blend of these curves into one curve with no change in power or anything of that nature. However, surprise, the blue line is what I get starting with a 20 degree timing and I apply the boost between 2000 and 12,000 RPM and I apply 40 degrees of total timing over that range. So you can see here we got a big bump in power and torque. Um, why? I wish I could explain that. I really don't have a good explanation. It has to be something to do with the way the timing is applied to the motor. Um, but certainly is a big, big benefit. I never run boost, so uh, it was, like I say, kind of a shock to me. So the other thing that happens, of course, is you don't get something for free. Uh, so you're, you're paying a fairly significant uh, penalty in current draw. Uh, but as long as you gear it right and uh, have some good cooling fans on board, you should be okay. We just look at, uh, well, let's look at the peak power point here. Uh, so you can see, uh, you know, we're 40 amps, 48 amps with the, um, uh, with no boost, just running uh, uh, can timing, and then we jump up to 60 amps uh, with the uh, uh, boost timing. So you're, you know, going to pay attention to that, obviously. Uh, and you're going to have to run a uh, higher gear ratio to deal with it, but you're going to get a big boost in performance, which is why they call it boost. Um, okay, I just want to show one more thing about boost, so I'll be back. Okay, so the last thing I want to show is uh, what the difference is between applying different amounts of boost timing. So I've got uh, basically the, the timing started at 20 degrees on the motor can, uh, same RPM range, and I just added 20, 30, and 40 degrees of uh, boost. So let's have a look and see what's going on. So you can see just adding 20, still realized a uh, uh, significant increase in peak power, 30, even more of an increase in peak power, and back to our, our uh, 40 degree of uh, boost timing, we get the, the most amount of power increase. So just wanted to show you that. The, I'm sure there's lots of other combinations of uh, um, boost range and timing values and all that sort of stuff that you can play with. I just uh, don't have enough time to present them all here. Um, so the one thing to realize is, is, as we talked about at the beginning, or showed in the beginning, there is that crossover point in the uh, torque values. So you can see I started at 2K and applied the uh, boost timing over uh, 10,000 RPM to essentially where that crossover point in the torque is. And that seems to provide a pretty significant improvement in, uh, in performance. Okay, so just to quickly summarize here, so increasing the motor can timing, so you... you lose bottom end torque and increase RPM, you know, basically a higher KV value. Uh, if you get more than 50 degrees of timing, the motor starts to become, this is total timing on the motor, uh, the motor becomes less efficient and you get more uh, energy loss as, as heat, so heating becomes a significant issue. And uh, too much mechanical timing may not necessarily be a good thing. Uh, you're going to be generating a lot of heat and not getting a lot of benefit for it. So you're going to reduce your motor life and uh, really not be seeing a huge, uh, huge amount of benefit. That generally applies to timing settings over about 50 degrees. Um, premium ESCs, well, there seems to be a performance uh, advantage in those. Uh, definitely need to do some more investigation, and uh, uh, I may do that if uh, there's interest. Uh, boost timing, so you need to set your uh, motor timing as low as you possibly can. Uh, 5 to 20 degrees is, is a good starting point, and then your uh, motor plus your boost timing again. You shouldn't really go above 60 degrees because more timing above 60 degrees really isn't going to give you a benefit. It's uh, just going to cost you uh, uh, power, in, or it's going to cost you uh, energy in the form of heat. 
and uh, your timing should be applied from your low to your mid-range RPM, not from uh, mid-range to upper range. You want to apply the boost uh, uh, early in the RPM range. Okay, that's it for now. We'll see you for the next version, which I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do for the next one, but uh, uh, there will be another one.